Welcome, visionaries, to Black Reef Island. Shrouded in mystery, it is home to experiments that threaten to destroy the very fabric of time and reality. And we're all stuck in a time loop, living the same day over and over again. Two assassins wage an endless conflict, one to kill his eight targets before the day starts over, and the other to make sure that he doesn't succeed. However, even the most hardened warriors need a day off. So what happens when our adversaries lay down their guns and talk? Let's find out in this very special Deathloop episode, Tuesday. God damn it! Juliana got the drop on me again. Shit! Wing me too! Six names off the list today. Doesn't look good at clearing the other two. Not while I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. Hey, baby. That looks painful. You want me to kiss it and make it better? Fuck off, Jules. You couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. <laughs> That's not what you said yesterday. Well, I would have said if I hadn't taken the top of your head off, baby. Colt grimaced. And damn, if she wasn't right. The woman was an outright terror. She'd shot him, stabbed him, blown him up, thrown him off buildings and even ran him over more times than he could count. Day in and day out, he'd studied, tried different routes, tactics, whatever he could come up with, and he was still caught in this damn loop. And every time he failed, every time he died, every time Juliana killed him, he woke up on that damn beach again to start the whole process over. Ah, she got him good this time. He could already feel the effects of the blood loss, but Colt wasn't a quitter. If he was going down, it wasn't going to be without a fight. Hit this, Jules! Colt leapt out from behind the column he'd been hiding behind, reaching for his trinket while Pepper in the walkway above with automatic weapons fire. She ducked out of the way, rolling to her right and raising her rifle again. See you tomorrow, baby. <sighs> same bat station. Same bat channel. Same beach. Same Black Reef Island. No matter how many times I wake up, it's always the same. Lost track a while ago as to how many times I've done this. Stuck in this time loop until I scratch those eight names off my list. At least I don't need to worry about clean clothes. <laughs> Never was a big fan of doing laundry anyway. And, ugh, getting blood out of Corinthian leather? It's the worst, I tell you. No one's laundry is that good. Don't know why I bother looking at my watch. It's always 8 a.m. in whatever godforsaken time zone this cursed island is in. Colt picked himself up off the sandy beach. All of Black Reef Island is spread out before him. The beach extends to the left and right, while a worn path ahead weaves in and out of the rocks up to the main buildings. All of his targets are somewhere on the island, and everyone is hostile. Rules are rules. He's got until the end of the day to find them all and kill them. If even one is left alive, the time loop resets, and he's back on this damn beach in the morning. Except today is Tuesday. Colt turns to the right, away from the path, and walks down the beach. The breeze picks up and the seagulls glide overhead, their calls echoing over the sound of waves crashing against the rocks. He can hear music coming from the other side of a small dune, and he begins to ascend to the top. He didn't bother to unholster his pistol, and smiled as he crested the dune overlooking a secluded cove. Below is a small table, two chairs, and an umbrella. Well, howdy, stranger. Colt saw Jules sitting in one of the chairs, wearing a sundress and a wide-brimmed hat, sipping on a pina colada. It was a martini in front of the opposite chair, with two olives, just like he liked it, and a small wooden picnic basket next to her. So, brunch today? Colt walked up, slipping off his coat and putting it over the back of the folding beach chair. Jules just took another sip of her drink and smiled. Thought we'd do a little something different this Tuesday. Food and drinks? Maybe take a little hike down the beach. Colt sat down and took the martini in hand. Jules had learned exactly how he liked his drinks, and he had to admit, she was nearly as good a bartender as she was a shot. Sounds great, Jules. I swear, thought I had you yesterday. Ha! <laughs> You're getting better, Colt. But I'm still the goddamn best. They rarely ever spoke about their jobs. It was one of the unwritten rules for their little Tuesday get-togethers. Yeah, Tuesdays. It's been a while since that first time. Got off the beach that morning, decided I needed a break. Jules still found me. 
I think that was the first time she stabbed me too. My heart really wasn't in it. Well, then she put a knife in it. Got mighty pissed the next day and was sloppy. Only crossed three names off the list before she put me down. It was more of the same, at least until the next Tuesday. Why Tuesday? I mean, every day is the same, right? Well, I keep a little tally in my head, if only just to keep perspective. Seven days a week and Tuesdays? Well, I figured I deserved a break. Just one day I could do whatever I damn well pleased. And I thought, maybe it wasn't just me either. So the next Tuesday I walked right up to Jules. Sure, she shot me dead before I got within 10 feet, but the following Tuesday, I managed five feet. That Tuesday after that, well, she actually said hello, and we talked. Of course, the next day we were back at it again. Even managed to get six targets again. Almost seven. I think Jules is off her game. Just trying to figure out my angle. And the next Tuesday, we had a drink together. Found out she likes cats, though I feel more like a dog person myself. Turned into our little routine. Six days of trying to get to my targets, and her doing her damn best to keep the loop going. It's always been a professional relationship. It's about respect. So that's why we don't talk about the job. And to be honest, I really didn't want to talk about that time she dropped a building on my head. Kind of embarrassing. Would you like another one, Colt? You know, she doesn't look half bad in that dress, though. Sure thing, Jules. What else you got in that basket? Brunch was delicious. Salmon, cheese, deviled eggs. Another few drinks and we hiked down the beach away for a swim. Never really get to appreciate the scenery while dodging bullets. Some of the views are quite spectacular, and the water's mighty fun. We talked more. Stories from the good old days. She'd been a majorette. Never would have guessed that. Told me about her uncle Bob, the day he'd been caught messing around with the town doc's daughter. Slipped up when he showed up with poison ivy all over his hands. The same time the doc's daughter had it all over her... Well, all over. I laughed hard at that one. Even thought I'd bust a gut. After a while, we ended up back at the cove for another drink. She must have had the staff replenish the stock because she handed me a bourbon on the rocks while she had a glass of champagne. I love the smell of that salt air. Don't you? Ain't too bad. She finished off the rest of her drink and placed the glass down on the table. I swirled the bourbon around my own glass, watching the ice cubes melt before knocking back the rest of the liquor. Damn, nothing better than fine bourbon and fine company. Well, Colt, think you'll do any better tomorrow? You never know, Jules. It's all part of the job, right? Jules reached down into her basket and pulled out one hell of a pistol. Be seeing you, Colt. Always with the flair for the dramatic. See you next Tuesday, Jules. That same morning... Colt slowly pulled himself up off the sand and looked around Black Reef Island. Eight names, eight targets. And maybe Jules and I could have a real Tuesday. Thank you, Visionaries, for joining us on this very special Deathloop episode, hosted by the Modus Files. It's always interesting to work on new projects and be able to bring new content to our listeners. Many thanks to Ken from the Chad Podcast for encouraging us to create this episode as part of an upcoming anthology of Deathloop stories. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Better yet, please leave a review so that others can find our podcast as well. You can follow us on Twitter, at Modus Files, for more information about our podcast, Fallout 76 content, and random musings on the Enclave. I'd also like to thank our cast, Austin Rogers as Colt, and Scald as Juliana. And a shout-out to the Apocalyptic Aristocracy Discord, home to a great group of fellow creators, the Robots Radio Podcast Community, and the rest of the Robots Radio Rocket Club, and Jeremiah Johnson, our favorite character artist who provided the wonderful character artwork you can find on our website. Stay tuned for the next episode, our Season 1 finale of The Modus Files, Battle of the Bog. Lastly... Thank you to all of our subscribers and supporters. Stay groovy, my friends.